Welcome back. Before I start this particular topic, there are three major techniques of integration that you need to know for the exam. The first technique is called the reverse chain rule. The second technique is called integration by substitution. And the third technique is called integration by parts. In this video, I'll be looking at 11.4 reverse chain rule. 11.4 represents chapter 11, section 4 of the Pearson A level maths, pure maths year 2 textbook. Now, the reverse chain rule is divided into two different parts. Form 1 and Form 2. Let's have a look at Form 1. To integrate the integral of kf dash of x over f of x dx where k is a constant, the first step is to set y equal ln mod of f of x, where f of x is just a denominator of this particular fraction. The second step is to find dy over dx, and then the third step is to adjust the constant to find the integral that you're trying to work out. Let's have a look at Form 2. To integrate the integral of kf dash of x in square brackets f of x to the power n dx where k is a constant, the first step is to set y equal f of x in square brackets to the power n plus 1. So you're adding 1 to the power. The second step is to find dy over dx. And then the third step is to adjust the constant to find the integral that you're trying to work out. Okay ladies and gents, here are six different integrals. My task is to find what particular form these integrals follow. It will be form 1, form 2 or neither. Before we look at these integrals, I want to go back to form 1 and form 2. I'm going to summarise what we have inside the integral in words. So over here, we have k, f dash over f. Over here, we have k, f dash in front of f. Now. Let's look at question number one. I've got the integral of 2 cos x over sine x dx. Over here, we have a fraction inside the integral. Therefore, it will follow form one. Let's check if it will actually work. The derivative of sine x is cos x. I have cos x in the numerator. Therefore, I have f dash over f. And in this particular case, k is equal to two. So the first integral follows form 1. Let's have a look at the second integral. We don't have a fraction. So I can eliminate form 1. I can go on to form 2. Inside the integral, I've got x squared plus 3x in brackets to the power 2. I'm going to differentiate x squared plus 3x with respect to x. If I do this, I get 2x plus 3. So what I have is f dash in front of f and in this particular case the k is 6 therefore the second integral follows form 2. Let's have a look at the third integral okay in the third integral I have a fraction okay therefore I need to turn to form 1 and in this particular case I know that the denominator e to the power x plus 1 differentiates to e to the power x. So we have e to the power x in the numerator. So we can conclude that this over here is f dash over f and in this particular case k is equal to 3. So the third integral follows form 1. Fourth integral. Now, inside the bracket, I have tan x, okay? If I differentiate tan x, I get sec squared x. So I have f dash in front of f. So this particular integral follows form two. And in this particular case, k is equal to four. Let's have a look at the fifth integral. Inside the bracket, I have sine x. If I differentiate sine x, I get cos x. So I have f dash in front of f. So this particular integral follows form 2. And in this particular case, k is equal to 5. The last one, the sixth integral. Inside the bracket, I have sine x. If I differentiate sine x, I get cos x. But in front of the sine x, I have a tan x over here. I don't have f dash in front of the f. 
Therefore, this particular integral does not follow form 2. And it definitely does not follow form 1 because inside the integral over here, we don't have a fraction. So I'll just put a cross which indicates that it does not follow form 1 or form 2. Over here, I have a summary of the reverse chain rule, form 1 and form 2. I want to work out the following integrals, 1, 2, 3 and 4. My first task is to identify what form these integrals follow. It will be either form 1 or form 2. Let's start off with the first integral. The integral of sine 2x over 3 plus cos 2x dx. If I differentiate the denominator, I get minus 2 sine 2x. I do have a sine 2x in the numerator. Therefore, this particular fraction is looking something similar to the fraction f dash over f. So this particular integral follows form 1. Let's have a look at the second integral. The integral of e to the power 2x over e to the power 2x plus 3 dx. Now, if I differentiate the denominator, I get 2e to the power 2x. In the numerator, I do have an e to the power 2x. So this particular fraction looks like a fraction of the form f dash over f. Therefore, this integral follows form 1. Moving on to the third and fourth integral. The third integral, integral of cos x squared 2x cot 2x dx. Right, if I differentiate cot 2x, I get minus 2 cos x squared 2x. I do have a cos x squared in front of the cot, therefore this particular expression is of the form f dash in front of the f. Hence this integral follows form 2. Fourth integral, integral of 2x plus 1 over square root x squared plus x plus 5 dx. Now, if I differentiate the denominator using the chain rule, I don't get something similar to the numerator which is 2x plus 1. Therefore this particular integral does not follow form 1. Perhaps it follows form 2. What I can do is rewrite this particular fraction using my knowledge of laws of indices. This integral is equivalent to the integral of 2x plus 1 multiplied by x squared plus x plus 5 to the power minus a half dx. Now, Inside this particular bracket, I have a quadratic, which if I differentiate with respect to x, I get 2x plus 1. I do have a 2x plus 1 over here in front of this bracket. Therefore, this particular expression is an expression of the form f dash in front of the f. Hence, this integral follows form 2. Okay, now I'm ready to integrate 1, 2, 3 and 4. Quick recap, if you want to go from y to dy with dx, that procedure is called differentiation. If you want to go from dy with dx back to y, that procedure is called integration. Let's have a look at the first integral. The first step is to set y equal ln mod of the denominator, which is 3 plus cos 2x. The second step is to find dy over dx which will be minus 2 sine 2x over 3 plus cos 2x. The next step is to put a rectangle around the dy with dx. Now, I know that if I integrate this particular fraction over here, my answer will be ln mod of 3 plus cos 2x plus c, because going from dy with dx back to y is called integration. Okay, now, if I go to this fraction over here, in front of the sine 2x, I have a 1. I need to say to myself, okay, how do I go from minus 2 to a 1? Well, I just divide by minus 2. Hence, this particular integral over here will equal minus a half of ln mod 3 plus cos 2x plus c. Let's have a look at the second integral. The first step is to set y equal ln mod of the denominator e to the power 2x plus 3. Second step, we need to find dy over dx. Well, that will be 2e to the power 2x over e to the power 2x plus 3. The next step is to put a rectangle around the dy over dx. 
going from dy with dx back to y is called integration therefore i know that the integral of this will just be ln in mod e to the power 2x plus 3 plus c now if i go back to this fraction over here what i have in front of the e to the power 2x in the numerator is a 1. i need to say to myself okay how do i go from 2 to 1 well i can divide by 2. therefore this integral over here will just equal a half ln mod of e to the power 2x plus 3 plus c moving on to the third and fourth integral the third integral i know that f is cot 2x the power of cot 2x is 1 if i add 1 to this power i will get 2 so the first step is to set y equal cot 2x in brackets to the power 2 second step is to find dy the dx so I bring down the power 2, cot 2x, subtract 1 from the power, it is 1, multiply by the derivative of cot 2x, which is minus 2 cos x squared 2x. I can simplify my dy over dx to give me minus 4 cos x squared 2x cot 2x. Okay, now I'm going to put a rectangle around this dy over dx over here. If I go back to my expression over here, in front of the cos x squared 2x, I have a 1. Okay? I need to say to myself, okay, how do I go from minus 4 to a 1? I need to divide by minus 4. Therefore, this particular integral will equal minus 1 over 4, cot 2x in brackets to the power 2 plus c. Moving on to the fourth integral. Looking at the fourth integral, I notice that f is x squared plus x plus 5. And the power of f is minus a half. If I add 1 to this power minus a half, I get minus a half plus 1, which is a half. Therefore, the first step is to set y equal x squared plus x plus 5 in brackets to the power a half. The next step is to find dy over dx. So dy over dx is equal to bring down the power of half x squared plus x plus 5 in brackets to the power of half minus 1 which is minus a half multiplied by the derivative of x squared plus x plus 5 which is 2x plus 1 I can put this together and write a half in bracket 2x plus 1 in bracket x squared plus x plus 5 to the power minus a half. My next step is to put a rectangle around my dy over dx. If I go back to this integral over here, I notice that in front of the bracket 2x plus 1, I have a 1. Now, I say to myself, okay, how do I go from a half to 1? I just multiply by 2. Therefore, this particular integral is equal to in bracket x squared plus x plus 5 to the power a half plus c here is an exam style question let's have a look at part a ladies and gents by writing cot x equal cos x over sin x find the integral of cot x dx okay so we are after the integral of cot x dx so the integral of cot x dx is equivalent to the integral of cos x over sin x dx okay we know that cot x is equal cos x over sin x now if i look at this particular fraction the denominator sin x differentiates to cos x we have cos x in the numerator hence this particular fraction is of the form f dash over f therefore we can actually integrate this using the reverse chain rule and in particular we are using form 1. So what is the first step? Well the first step is to set y equal ln mod of what you have in the denominator. In this particular case it is sin x. Now I want to differentiate my y so I'm going to find dy over dx. Well that will just be cos x over sin x. If I put a rectangle around this I can see that this over here, cos x over sin x, 
is precisely what I have inside the integral over here, cos x over sin x. Hence, this particular integral will just be ln mod of sin x plus c. Moving on to part b. Show that the integral of tan x dx is equal ln mod sec x plus c. The first step is to write down the integral of tan x dx is equivalent to the integral of sin x over cos x dx because tan x is equal sin x over cos x. Now, if I differentiate cos x, I get minus sin x. I do have a sine in the numerator, hence this fraction is of the form f dash over f. So I can integrate this using the reverse chain rule, and in particular, I can use form 1. Now, I need to set y equal ln mod of cos x. If I differentiate, I get dy over dx is equal minus sin x over cos x. I can now put a rectangle around my dy over dx. I notice that in front of the sine x, I have a minus, which is the same as minus 1. If I go back to this fraction over here, in front of the sine x, I have a 1. So now I say to myself, OK, how do I go from minus 1 to a 1? Well, I divide by minus 1. So this integral is equivalent to minus ln mod of cos x plus c. Now, I can use the power rule for natural logs and rewrite this particular term over here as ln mod cos x in brackets to the power minus 1 plus c. I know that cos x in brackets to the power minus 1 is equivalent to 1 over cos x, which is just sec x. Hence, I have ln mod of sec x plus c as required. 